By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And as you can see by looking at the playmats, we're going to look at another match of Alpha 40 League. And this is for now the last Alpha 40 League episode in this mini series. Um, this is the third match video. If you've missed the other two, no worries. There's a link popping up right now that will take you to the playlist where you can see the other two matches. And um, they were pretty cool. So if you haven't seen them, consider taking a look because they were quite interesting. And I have to say... I'm liking this format. Obviously, the problem with the format is you need a lot of alpha cards. And uh, for example, I don't have a lot of alpha cards. But if you do, I think this is really a cool format for you to play. I'm, I'm really, I'm liking it. It's pretty balanced. And it, I, I don't know if it comes close to the way alpha was being played in 1993 because I wasn't playing at the time. I started in 95 myself. Um, but I really get that old school vibe. You know, I love the fact that, for example, a giant spider is a really good creature in this format. Talking about giant spiders, we're looking at a match between Edo and Mari. Edo is sitting on the right, and Edo is actually playing with a deck with giant spiders. He's playing black and green, and he's playing against Mari, who's playing mono black. And he also has some drudge skeletons. We've seen them before in these series. They're quite strong also in this um in this format so that's all quite interesting now i can imagine that maybe you want to know a little bit more about the alpha 40 league how can you find out more about this league it's really easy check out the description below there you will find a link to the rules and to a website where the rules are stated um so yeah you can find more information there so just check the description below also you can find more information there about the rules because the rules are quite specific they're based on the original alpha rules so it's uh it's a little bit different you know than the magic you're probably used to um before i go and jump into the deck decks i would just like to mention that as always you can also skip that section and go straight to the games it's really easy just check the description below there you will find a series of timestamps. one of those stamps reads mtg games click on there that will take you straight to the game action um, and for now we are going to start with the deck deck i'm going to start with the deck of Madi, the player on the left and he's playing mono black let's take a look and here we see the deck of Mari Mono Black. And I think Mono Black is one of the more popular choices. It's really strong in Alpha. And um, I guess it's, when you think about budget, which is kind of a hard thing to say when you're talking about Alpha cards, I think it's, it's one of the most budget friendly. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if I'm talking gibberish. Like I said, I haven't played this format often. Uh, actually, this was my first kind of tournament, although it wasn't really a tournament. It was more like a get-together but like Alpha 40 League event. So I'm, I'm really a rookie here. Um, one thing that I'd like to mention is, because I got, I got a few questions about this in the last video, and, and rightfully so, by the way. And this was a question about how does Pestilence work in the Alpha 40 meta? Because how it usually works is every time you put a damage through Pestilence, um, you know, everything gets a damage. And for example, a Drudge Skeleton, you need to regenerate it every time you activate your Pestilence. Because, um, you know, for every activation, it deals one damage to each thing. And then after that, a new activation, again, one damage, right? What, what you can do in Alpha 40 is you can choose to stack all that damage, so to keep all the damage together and resolve all the damage at once. So, for example, you can say I'm going to put uh, three damage through my Pestilence. So I'm going to tap three Swamps. And then you can choose to say, instead of doing it separate, three times one damage, I'm going to do it as one action. So one time, three damage to each creature and each player. Now, this has a pretty big impact, right, on the strategy. Because that means you can play Drudge Skeleton and Will of the Wisp much better next to your Pestilence. Because now you deal three damage to everything in one go. So it means you only have to regenerate your Drudge once, your Willow once. Right? Making it a far more efficient strategy than in the other old school um, rule sets and metas. Right? So... I just wanted to explain that. So when you're looking at the game, you're not like, hey, he's making a mistake. He should regenerate his stretch skeletons like three times instead of only once. Well, hopefully now I've explained it to you. Again, I'm not a judge. I'm not a specialist. So um, if there's somebody out here listening to this and, and can kind of explain it in the proper wording, please do so in the comments below. I would really appreciate that. Um, looking at the rest of the deck, by the way, I'm just a huge fan of the Rod of Ruin. I think it's so cool that it's in this deck. And I think it's good because you're going to face some 1-1s one -ones, like the Royal Assassin that Madi is playing with. But there are some other 1-1s one in the meta like Lanowar Elves, for example. So, I mean, I think Rod of Ruin 
in in the Alpha 40 leak could be pretty useful actually, and I'm, I'm I think it's cool that I see it here. So yeah, I like it. I wonder by the way because I also see a terror in Maddie's deck, and of course he cannot terror the black cards of his opponent Edo, but Edo also has green cards, so the terror is probably going to be. Uh, of use for him so i wonder now if if Edo also plays with terrors i hope not for him because he won't be able to use them against um against maddie because remember terror can only destroy a creature that's not black or not an artifact creature so it's got some limitations so this is the deck of maddie now let's take a look at the deck of Edo. And here we see the deck of Edo. So it is black, it is green, and it's got a juggernaut in it. Yeah, really cool. And I'm mentioning the juggernaut because Edo actually uh, beat me with one swing with his juggernaut at this tournament, man. That was brutal. That was brutal. Um, anyway, looking at the deck, it, it is pretty explosive. I think the dangers here are, of course, the giant growth in combination with the berserk, in combination with the trample um, ability from berserk. I mean... Before you know it, you know, if you put, for example, a Giant Grove on your Sengir Vampire, it becomes a 7-7. If you then play a Berserk over it, the power gets doubled. So that means 14 Trample damage coming at you. You know, it's even worse, of course, with the Juggernaut because it's got a base power of 5. So, I mean, this, this deck can be quite explosive. One of the things I really like, and it's kind of an old school, we used to call it a mini force of nature, is that Edo can build his own mini force of nature. Uh, and you do that by playing your War Mammoth, right? Which is four mana for a 3-3 three, three trample. You attack with it and you play a Giant Grove, then it becomes a 6-6 six, six trample. And of course, force of nature is an 8-8 eight, eight trample, so a mini force of nature. You know, I, I, I like that. Another thing that he can do is, is another really favorite play of mine. It's, it's making a giant, giant spider, right? So a giant growth on already a giant spider. That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? The cool thing is if you giant growth your giant spider, it's actually a 5-7 and it can eat up almost everything through the air. Giant spider is a pretty good creature in this format. So I'm looking forward to see the giant spider maybe gobble up a Sengir vampire. I like that. I like giant spider. Let me know what you think of giant spider. It's a cool card, right? Yeah, it's a cool card. Oh, and um, when we were looking at the deck of Madi, one of the things I pointed out is I wonder if Edo has any terrors in his deck because he's, he won't be able to use it. And look at his list, there are no terrors here. And what I really like about his deck is the anime deads in here, especially anime dead in combination with Berserk. Because Berserk, of course, means that when you've used it, your creature's gonna die at the end of the turn. But then with anime dead, at least you can get your top creature back. Another nice thing is he can also use his Berserk as defense. He can play a Berserk on an attacking creature of the opponent so that he can remove that creature. So it goes to the bin and then he can play his, play his anime dead over it. So I'm liking that, that synergy. I think Berserk anime dead, that's really a good little little team team play there. Uh, also, the three sinkholes are pretty good. And, ooh, the Bok Wrath. We see the Bok Wrath or Wreath. I think somebody told me it's Bok Wreath. So we see the Bok uh, Wreath there at the top. It's 3-3. Three, three. It's Swamp Walk. So that's a big problem. I'm just going to repeat. It's Swamp Walk. He's playing against a mono black player. Matty, you're only playing with swamps. He's got the bog, man. I think that Bok could be decisive if he draws it, of course. I think when I'm looking at the decks, I mean, this is going to be a close match. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, talking about that, let's go to the games. Game number one. Here we go. It is Madi sitting on the left, taking on Edo, who's sitting on the right. Madi here starting with a Soul Ring, and there's a Basic Swamp. So good start for Madi here. Does he have a follow-up play? Only a Willow missing his land drop here. That is not great. Passing turn here to Edo, playing a second Swamp. At least Madi is finding mana now. Can he do something with four? Maybe he wants to get five playing a Sengir. Ooh, Ice Storm. And I think that's really good. You know, considering your opponent plays with Sengir Vampires, you really don't want him to go to five mana too quickly. So this is a good move. Mana number four. Does Edo want to do? Okay, yeah. Tapping four, playing a Juggernaut. Five, three, has to attack each turn. Luckily for Madi, he has that Willow to Wisp. Problem, of course, is that uh, Edo is playing with some Berserks. Berserk giving a creature trample, and then the Willow doesn't look so good. But at least it's something for now. Let's see. Looks like Madi is a little bit in the tank here, tapping one black and two, tapping all four. <laughs> okay, on tapping again. What is he going to do here? I mean, you. you 
you probably think he would have wanted to keep one swamp open to regenerate the willow. I wonder what he's going to do here. Tapping two black. I guess. Oh, playing double dark ritual. Six black in the mana pool, plus two from the soul ring. Eight mana in total. Wow, what is he going to do here with the eight mana? This is so interesting. He must be preparing a big play. Okay, he's changing his mind again. And, okay, playing a Drain Life. That means he also gets three life, by the way. And playing an Anime Dead. Taking the Juggernaut out of the bin of Edo here. And remember, uh, Anime Dead gives minus one, minus O to the creature. So it's now a 4-3 Juggernaut. There's a Sinkhole. So that land destruction plan of Edo is, is kind of working out here. Attack for four. So, oh, there's a Berserk. So that means it's going to take eight, but the Juggernaut is destroyed. So not ten, but eight, exactly. And, oh, an anime dead. Okay, this is really funny. This is really funny. So getting back the Juggernaut. So having his own Juggernaut back now. The Juggernaut just keeps coming back. It already died two times. One time to a Berserk, one time to a Drain Life. And there's a Pestilence. Interesting. And um, like I said in the deck deck, Pestilence works differently in Alpha, right? So you can just um, let all the damage resolve in one go. Ooh, there's another Berserk. So this Juggernaut Berserk twice. This is really like a crazy Juggernaut, isn't it? So that means it becomes 8 in power being blocked by the Willow. Willow is 1 in toughness, so 7 damage gets through. And there we see the life total drop from 23 to 16 for Madi. And tapping five, okay, there's the Sengir Vampire. And things are looking good here. Ooh, Willow the Wisp for Edo. So he's got a solution to the Sengir. Now the interesting thing is what um, Madi can do is use Pestilence for one, forcing Edo to regenerate. And when he regenerates, your creature actually taps. And when it's tapped, he can then attack with the Sengir. I wonder if he's going to see this synergy. I think he does. Gonna pay one. And there we go. This is exactly what I expected. Attacking for four. So taking five in total because the one of Pestilence also gets in there. So things are really looking up for Madi for this match. There's a giant spider. Hopefully. Okay, man. Please, Edo, have a giant growth on your giant spider. That would make it a giant, giant spider. Is it going to happen? No. Oh, paralyze. I'm not happy with that. Why did you do that? Madi, why did you paralyze it? Paying three, three to everything, regenerating. And he's going to regenerate the Willow now. Has one black open if he wants to. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Why wouldn't he regenerate? Why not? And he's going to attack. He's on seven. That means it's the end of the game because three damage from the Pestilence and four damage from the Vampire. Seven in total. Ooh, this was an interesting game. It was very swingy. I liked it. Looking forward to game number two. So let's let these players shuffle up and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. One up for Madi, the player on the left. So Edo, man, you got to win this to make it to game number three. Both players starting with a basic swamp sinkhole. I mean, I like that land destruction plan. I think it could work. Will we see a forest? Ooh, missing a land drop here. That is unfortunate for Edo. If he can find a forest, maybe he can cast an Ice Storm. It looks like he cannot find anything. Has to discard here. That is brutal. Tossing away that beautiful War Mammoth. There is a Drudge Skeletons by Madi here. Oh man, Edo, you need Lance. Need it now. At least this is something playing a Paralyze on the Drudge. And of course, Madi doesn't have enough land. He does now, so next turn he could untap it if he wants to. I wonder if he wants to. And again, Edo not finding anything, tossing the Sengir in the bin. That is unfortunate. Will this still turn into an actual game? I do hope so. And Madi deciding to untap the Drudge, playing Swamp number five. Is he going to attack for one? He is not, just passing turn here. There we see Dark Ritual into a Bok Wrath. That is pretty cool. Remember, the bog has Swamp Walk. It's a 3-3 Swamp Walker, so it cannot be blocked. 
Maybe Mahdi has a drain life. First, he's going to play out a soul ring, paying four for a pestilence. Okay, so he can use pestilence to kill the bog. At least he can swing in once, putting him on 17, and he's found a land. Not a forest, though. Remember, Ada was playing with green as well. Yeah, and I, I think, I think the, the, the bog's going to die. Probably Mahdi is going to attack first for one, then kill the bog. And why is he going to attack first? Because when you regenerate something, it's going to be tapped. So the Dredge Skeleton is going to be tapped either way. Exactly. First he attack, going to 19. Ooh, he's playing a Ritual. Pump that in. Then I'm expecting a Sengir after this. Everybody taking damage here from that Pestilence. It's so hard to play against the Pestilence. Such a good card. Here we see a Singir Vampire. 4-4 four, four Flyer, and I think this game is going to be over soon. This must be frustrating here for Edo, having that good start with the Sinkhole, but just couldn't find any lands, and no deck works without lands. Attacking for Fiver is going to drop to 11. I mean, maybe, just maybe. Okay, there's a Willow. That is something. Again, he can do that trick, though, with the Pestilence, forcing Edo to tap his own Willow. We saw that in game one. We're probably going to see it now in game number two. Madi on 14, Edo on 11, and it's looking really, really bad here for, uh, for Edo. And I believe that Madi forgot to pay the 4, though, to untap the Drudger. Is he now going to do that still? No, I guess he forgot it. And, um, yeah. So look at him using that Pestilence. And now Edo's on four measly life. And, oh, man, look at his hand. Oh, that's so bad. Edo, man. All you needed was green mana. And you could have so gotten back in this game. I mean, the way you started with that sinkhole T2, and then if you would have just drawn your lands. I'm, I have to admit, I'm a little bit bummed. I'm a little bit bummed out because I know Edo's deck. I played against him on the, in the tournament, and it's, it's a really sweet deck. I mean, it's got some really sweet cards, and I just love seeing that Berserk in action with giant groves and giant spiders and whatnot and war mammoths. But the good news is we are about to get another chance because they actually played a third game. So I suggest we just, you know, check it out. And let's hope, Edo, because I'm rooting for you, man. Let's hope that you get to cast a mini force of nature. So War Mammoth, Giant Grove, or at least a giant, giant spider. Okay, please, Edo, please. So let's take a look at game three. Go, Edo! Game number three, here we go. So it's already two games up for Mahdi, the player on the left, Mono Black. But who cares? I just enjoy game number three. And I'm rooting here for Forests for Edo. And there's, again, a Sinkhole. So it's kind of a repetition of game number two. So far, so good. And now he needs a Forest. Yes. And passing turn here. Ice Storm would have been even sweeter, but cannot have it all, though. But it's good to see Edo finally finding some green mana here. Four mana, there's the Juggernaut, 5-3, Powerhouse. And there's a Royal Assassin, that's a perfect answer from Mahdi. Remember, Juggernaut has to attack. Ooh, playing a Paralyze. And a Giant Grove over the Juggernaut, so eight damage for Mahdi. And Mahdi's gonna try to find land number four. If he can't, then he's in trouble. Okay, so he can. So next turn, he can untap the Royal Assassin to kill the Juggernaut. And can he play as something else? I mean, he's got four, four lands to spend this turn. Remember, if it wasn't for the sinkhole of Edo earlier in the game, Mahdi would already have four lands to untap the Royal. And uh, it seems there's some chatting going on here. It was a very casual atmosphere. It was really nice. Uh, a lot of lot of old school talk. There were a couple of beers as well in this tournament. I see a Rod of Ruin there in the hand of Mahdi, by the way. Mahdi just played a Rod of Ruin. It's a cool card, man. Doesn't matter if it's not useful yet. Just play it. You've got four to spend anyway. Ooh, is there a Dark Ritual? Oh, he's playing a Paralyze and a Demonic Tutor. It's pretty brutal. Interesting choice to play the Paralyze. I guess it means that Ada will have to like use an entire turn almost 
to untap the juggernaut. So it kind of works as some kind of time walk, I guess. And then next turn, he can, of course, kill it. Ooh, getting an anime dead. Ooh, he wants to animate that juggernaut. That is mean, man. Attacking here, taking five damage, and now he's untapping the royal. And he's probably going to kill the juggernaut. That's exactly what happens here. Juggernaut's dead. Remember, he's got that animate dead in hand, so I'm expecting an animate. There is a war mammoth and another force. So at least there are no land problems uh, for Edo this uh, game number three. Paying four to untap the royal again. I must say a paralyze on a royal assassin is pretty good because every time you use the royal, you got to tap it. There is the animate on the juggernaut. So next turn, he's going to swing in with a 4-3. There's the attack. There's a berserk. So it's a 6-3. Six, uh, six, and he's actually going to kill the juggernaut. And then there's also the action from the royal assassin. Not really clear what happened there, to be honest. And there's the Bok Wrath. So the Bok 3-3 three, three Swamp Walker. I think that Royal Assassin is really the big problem here for Edo. He needs to take care of that Royal. Because besides that, it's looking pretty good. Look at the life total of, of Mari. I mean, he's on 7. He's pretty low. Ooh, there is Rod of Ruin. The Timmy on a stick. That is pretty cool. Attacking here with both. Killing the Bog. Taking two from the Spider. And also taking damage from the Bog. So I guess this is, again, um, a little different when you look at the rules. You know, usually you can use Royal Assassin before you take the damage. But I think this is something to do that the combat step is not divided in phases anymore. So you just have to take the damage even though you can kill the tapped attacking creature. I, th I think it's something like that. Let me know in the comments below if you can explain this uh, with the right jargon. Uh, you know, so please help me out here. Anyway, uh, we see Mahdi is on two life. I think he's going to die. I mean, he needs something to block that Sengir needs a willow. It's a paralyze. I mean, it's not great, but it's not going to do it, though. He can just pay four. That's what he's doing now to untap the Sengir. He's going to fly in for four. Anime dead. Make matters even worse. Getting back the bog. And taking a damage here. Interesting, he's not attacking with the Sengir, so maybe I am missing something rules-wise here. Playing a Pestilence. I think if he attacks now with the Bog and the Sengir, it should do it, though. Attacking with everything instead, I, th I think it's enough, though. Like, he can kill the Sengir, then he still takes the damage from the Bog because it's got Swamp Walk. So that's it. And there's also a Giant Grove. Yeah, so Edo at least takes a game. And um, I have to say I'm a little confused with how all of that works with the Royal Assassin. Taking damage or not taking damage. I know under modern MTG rules, you can kill the attacking creature before the damage step. So before the damage is dealt. Um, but I was a little confused because I saw a few attack steps where actually Mahdi did take the damage. And killed the creature with the royal. And then I also saw moments where that didn't happen. So let me know in the comments below if you can explain how this works according to the Alpha 40 rule set. I would really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I would also like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. Like I said before, this is the last Alpha 40 League episode for now. Uh, if you like Alpha 40 League and you'd like me to make more episodes, let me know in the comments below. And um uh, yeah, maybe I'll make some more. Maybe I'll join some more of these events and, and make some more videos. Uh, for now, thank you for watching. And if you want to support the channel, you can do that in three really easy steps. First off, hit that like button. That really helps a lot. Second, leave a comment. And third, if you're new here, click that subscribe button and subscribe to Timmy Talks. All that helps the channel grow. Another thing you can do is you can become a patron on Patreon. And uh, by doing that, you can support the channel financially. It already starts with $1 a month. There's probably a card popping up right now. Click, click on there and find out how you can support Timmy Talks 
financially as well. And a nice perk of that is your name will be in the end scroll. Yeah, how cool is that? Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at all the beautiful, fantastic, amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te somber kan zien.